Hi, I'm Bernadette Flynn Kelton, a registered nurse, board certified lactation consultant, and health educator at Penn Medicine Princeton Health Community Wellness. Today, I'm going to talk about the importance of helping you and your new baby get a good night's sleep. With baby in the house, you can't help but think about sleep, whether you're focused on getting your baby down for a nap or longing for a time when baby and the rest of the family can sleep through the night. Sleep deprivation is an unavoidable part of being a new parent. And for many, it's one of the hardest parts of the job. The round the clock demands of caring for an infant can really take their toll on everyone, especially new mothers who are also dealing with body changes, recuperation, shifts in hormones, and perhaps breastfeeding. New parents are often surprised to learn that babies don't sleep longer than two to three hours at a time in the early days and months. Regular sleep cycles usually begin around three to four months when some babies might sleep for four to five hour stretches, but every baby is different. In our baby care classes, we remind parents that babies are not designed to sleep soundly. They go through different sleep cycles to be able to rouse easily and breastfeed often, which is beneficial for growth and development. Simply put, babies have a built-in alarm system that fires off, wakes the baby for feedings, and once satiated, they return to sleep again. Parents can prepare for the inevitable sleep deprivation by planning frequent rest periods throughout the day, and if possible, asking family and friends to help with household chores, like cooking and cleaning, as well as parenting duties, like feeding, bathing, and changing the baby, so mom and dad can get some rest. The support of family and friends is an important part of helping new parents cope with their major life change. New parents should be reminded that it's okay to ask for help if they're feeling overwhelmed or exhausted. <music> Babies can be very different types of sleepers, and some need more help than others to fall asleep. As you spend more time with your infant, you'll start to learn to recognize the signs that they're tired, such as a glazed look, staring into space, frowning, and fussiness. You will also learn sleep techniques that work best for you, such as swaddling. Swaddling can be helpful, but it's only recommended for back sleeping and early on. When your baby begins to show signs that they can turn from side to side, or they attempt to roll, usually around three to four months, but it could be earlier, then it's time to stop swaddling. It's important to remember to never use a weighted blanket, weighted swaddle, or weighted sleeper. Sleep routines such as a warm bath, infant massage, and white noise machines, and putting baby down in a dimly lit room can be helpful. Recently, a study published by the journal Current Biology offered a new approach to getting an infant ready to sleep. In this study, researchers found that if a caregiver carries an infant while walking for five minutes, then sits with the baby for eight minutes, they can successfully soothe the child and possibly get them to sleep. They discovered that an infant's heart rate decreases when they are carried, which helps them calm down and get ready for sleep. Babies love gentle movements, so this technique reminds them of the time they were in the womb. Researchers stress that walking with an infant in your arms for five minutes continuously is crucial. Then it can be followed by five to eight minutes of sitting with your child in your arms in order to stabilize their sleep. The reason? The first five to eight minutes of sleep is considered shallow sleep. If you place an infant down during that time, they're more likely to wake up. However, if you wait for five to eight minutes after the infant falls asleep, it will increase your success rate. As we've discussed, it's important for everyone in your house that your baby develop good sleep habits. Every caregiver should follow safe sleep guidelines every time your baby is put down for a nap or sleep to be sure that they are always sleeping in a safe environment. Failure to follow the guidelines can put your baby at risk for sudden infant death syndrome or SIDS or other sleep-related dangers like suffocation or entrapment. 
SIDS is the leading cause of death for children one month to one year of age. Most of those deaths occur between the ages of one and four months. SIDS is most common among African American and Native American babies, according to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. In New Jersey, we have one of the lowest SIDS rates in the United States, which validates that parents have been following safe sleeping advice and that SIDS education has had a positive impact. You can help ensure your baby's safety during sleep by following a few rules that are as easy as A, B, C. A, alone. Baby sleeps alone in a safety-approved crib in close proximity to the parent's bed. B, back. Back to sleep. Baby sleeps on the back every time. C, crib. Use a safety-approved crib. Sleeping alone means that baby sleeps on a separate sleep surface such as a crib, portable crib, bassinet, or play yard in your bedroom near your bed. It is recommended to share your room, but not your bed, for at least six months, or ideally one year or more. Research shows that babies who are kept in close proximity to mom, including rooming in at the hospital, and co-share the bedroom with parents at home, have better quality of sleep and are generally more content cry less, and have lower levels of stress hormones. These sleeping arrangements have also shown to help baby breastfeed sooner, longer, and more easily, and the practice also reduces the risk of SIDS. Parents also benefit from close proximity during sleep by learning, understanding, and responding to their baby's early cues around feeding and other needs, which helps increase confidence in caring for the baby. Other things to keep in mind. Always start your baby on their back to sleep, both at night and during naps for the first 12 months. Once your baby has learned the skill of turning over from back to belly and belly to back, it is not necessary to return them to their back every time. If you bring your baby into bed or onto a couch to feed and you become drowsy or the baby falls asleep, return your baby to the crib and remember, back to sleep. Use a safety approved mattress and crib and cover the mattress with a fitted sheet. Do not use memory foam mattresses. Parents can research safe baby products at the Consumer Product Safety Commission website. You can research there for recall baby items as well. Keep blankets and sheets, pillows, toys, stuffed animals, quilted or breathable bumpers, and other items out of the baby's crib. Do not use wedges or positioners in the crib. Breastfeeding is recommended to reduce the risk of SIDS. To find out more information about breastfeeding, join us for a free prenatal breastfeeding class. Once breastfeeding is well established and both mom and baby are comfortable with the process, consider introducing a pacifier. Introducing a pacifier is a personal decision. However, the American Academy of Pediatrics recommends that parents give pacifiers at naps and bedtime because they keep the tongue forward in the mouth so that it can't block the airway, which can help protect against SIDS. Formula feeding or combination fed babies can use a clean pacifier right from the beginning. If you do give your baby a pacifier when you put them down, Make sure it is not attached to the infant's clothing, not hung around the infant's neck, and that no clip, string, or toy are attached to it. If the pacifier falls out during sleep, there is no need to replace it. Avoid overheating your baby. Babies can dress in one additional layer of clothing. Babies can safely sleep in size-appropriate sleep sacks or wearable blankets. Keep baby's head and face uncovered during sleep. Hats are not recommended during sleep. Smoking and nicotine are major risk factors for SIDS. It's recommended that mothers who smoke or vape quit during pregnancy and that no one smokes or vapes at home or in a car around the baby. By trying different sleep techniques, 
you can find the ones that help your baby sleep safely and allow everyone at home to rest and recharge. If you have concerns about your infant's sleep habits, contact your pediatrician for advice.